Welcome to the Linter Media Game of the Week pregame show. This week, it's the Mid-State League opener for Circleville and Logan Elm. With Mike Smith, I'm Dan Ramey. We are here. I just need to push the right button. You got a lot of buttons to push, man. I do. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the program today. Uh, those of you that um, have not known about this, uh, uh, this is not only a big week, but there is a big void that uh, has been felt since over the weekend when we lost Brad Morris, uh, who was the founding uh, member of Sporting Pumpkin, former Circleville Herald sports director and editor, just a lovely, lovely individual. Mm -hmm. And we lost him uh, Saturday last week. Uh, it was during the Ohio State game, to be honest with you. And uh, so, unfortunately, uh, there will be a huge void. And he was a massive individual physically, but uh, he had the biggest heart you'll ever find, literally and figuratively. Yeah. We're hoping that uh, possibly during our halftime uh, we might be able to get uh, somebody up. I have reached out to John Halley. I know it would be tough for, for John to yeah. – to do it, but if you can, uh, John, we welcome you to come up and visit with Tom and I at halftime to, to talk about Brad. Uh, he will be remembered. There's oh no my, question. Yeah. There will be a moment of silence for him. There will be something done during the pregame show. Uh, Terry Holbert, uh, Logan Elm head coach, was telling me about this yesterday. And also, we, we hoped to have this for the show today, but uh, we, unfortunately, they may not receive them until tomorrow. But both Circleville and Logan Elm will wear a uh, decal oh, on their helmet with the initials BM for Brad Morris. And uh, so I, I texted Terry and I said, hey, I forgot to ask you about this. Do you have one we'd like to show on the show today? And he says, well, if I get one, I'll, I'll let you know. But we may not get them till Friday. Mm -hmm. So uh, there'd be a lot of, uh, lot of that going on. So yeah. we felt it was right to start the show off in that fashion, talking about uh, one of the biggest Bravo fans you'll ever find, and uh, that is Brad Morris. All right, coming up in a moment, we'll hear from both coaches for the contest, uh, as this is uh, a big game for Logan Elm, because if they win, they're 4-0 mm -hmm. to start the season, and a leg up in the Mid-State League competition. And for Circleville, uh, their record right now going in. They're 0-3. Looking for their first win. And... What better way to do it against your arch rival? <laughs> That's right. It's a, a big bout taking place Friday night at Logan Elm. We'll have the game coverage on Litter Media Radio. And now let me preface, I should say this, should have prefaced with this. Uh, if Litter Media Radio is not able for us to connect to it, we'll do what we did last week and we'll use Facebook Live. So, uh, just keep that in the back of your mind as a backup plan right. for if things go awry. If you can't find it one place, go to the other. Yes, but we hope that uh, you'll be able to find it on Litter Media Radio. If you've never visited Litter Media Radio, you can simply go to our website, littermedia.com, click where it says Litter Media Radio, or you can scan that QR code that uh, we have on screen right now. This isn't the last time we'll show it through the show, so uh, make sure you uh, stick with us and we'll show you yet even more. When we return, we'll hear from Steve Evans, head coach of the Circleville Tigers, coming up on the Litter Media Game of the Week pregame show. Talking with Circleville football coach Steve Evans before the big rivalry game, the uh, Kingston National Bank Trophy Brawl with the Logan Elm Braves. Coach, a little tougher start in the first uh, three games compared to last year, but you were competitive, put up a lot of yards last week despite a loss to West Fall. Yeah, we did. Uh, you know, first two weeks we struggled quite a bit offensively. Um, finally got things on track, you know, offensively last week, but then, uh, you know, kind of a reversal of the roles, the defense uh, kind of let us down there, but that, that's the way it goes. And um, that's the thing we've talked with the kids about is, you know, we've, we've showed some good signs defensively, we've showed now some good signs offensively, and now it's time to put it all together in the same night. How many kids did you lose to graduation from last year? Uh, we had 10 seniors last year, yeah. 
That's yep. hard to replace that. It is, you know, and, and uh, we only got six seniors this year. Mm -hmm. uh, the junior class has been small, you know, or the senior class has been small ever since I've been here. Um, you know, so we, we got a nice big junior class and, and uh, you know, and then the sophomore and freshman class as well, so. I think you had uh, Jude Blair with a 200 and some yards. And a yeah, I think scores. Jude went for uh, 209 on, on 20 carries. Um, Hudson Phelan, uh, you know, as quarterback, as a sophomore, you know, I thought he has really in, improved week to week. And you know, I think he was 12 of 17 for you know like 140 yards and a touchdown. You know, and, and you can't ask for much more than that. So and you know, we were really well balanced. We ended up rushing for 254 yards, I think, and like I said, through for like 140. And several kids from the stats I saw receiving that touched the ball, so you've got some multiple sure. choices there. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think we had, uh, there was three different guys that carried the ball, Jude and then uh, Drew Thornsley, and, and of course Hudson uh, carried it a few times. And then I think we had, there were six or seven different guys that, that had at least one pass reception. What do you see of uh, Logan Elm on game film that uh, is going to be, you know, something you've got to stop? Sure. Um, you know, the first thing that stands out is the quarterback. You know, I, I thought he played really well against us last year, uh, you know, and he's, he's got a year of experience under his belt and, and, and coming back, you know, he's got some, some big targets to throw to. they got some nice skill kids, and, you know, I thought they also did a, did a good job with, um, you know, running the football in the second half of the Westfall game. So, you know, they, they've got multiple areas to go offensively. Um, defensively, um, they're just a solid team. Uh, we've seen them, you know, back and forth between a 4-3 and a 3-4 look. And, and uh, so, you know, preparing for both of those, not knowing which one you're going to, to expect. But, um, you know, we, we just got to be able to recognize and, and, and follow our rules and, and do what we do best. You know, we had that Westfall uh, Logan Elm game earlier. And if Westfall doesn't turn the ball over three yeah. times on long drives in the first half, that's a different ball game. It is, you know, and, and that's what we talked about, um, you know, actually last week with our kids at halftime. It was a 14-6, I think, at, at halftime, and then I think Logan Elm went on and scored like 29 unanswered in the second half. And, um, you know, we had hoped that, that the same thing would happen mm -hmm. for us, that, you know, maybe they just got worn out or, or whatever it may be, but, um, you know, that, that wasn't the case. So uh, we, I know Logan Elm's, you know, they're, they're playing with confidence. I know they're off to a 3-0 and start. I think for the first time and I don't know eight nine years yeah. maybe I think I saw so you know you know coach Holbert does a great job with those guys over there and, and they're believing in their system and, and executing at a high level right now Steve good luck Friday night I appreciate it thank you again Circleville Tigers head football coach Steve Evans on our Litter Media preview show at Country Clipper pride runs deep we take pride in knowing our mowers help create a space for families to make memories that our features transform mowing into an enjoyable experience. Most importantly, we take pride in knowing the decision to purchase a Country Clipper will be one you can be proud of for years to come. Country Clipper Zero Turn Mowers. You asked, we delivered. New Mike's Hard Lemonade Zero Sugar. Zero Sugar, amazing taste, years in the making. Now that's a drink worthy of the name Mike. At Rathcamp Financial, we act as your advocate in all wealth matters. We believe in long-term relationships and working to earn your continued trust with our customized investment solutions. Our greatest satisfaction comes from working with clients for many years and helping them realize their dreams. Find a career you love with Pickaway Ross Adult Education. Skilled trades careers are in high demand with no signs of slowing down. Pickaway Ross offers career training programs with expert instructors and hands-on learning tactics to create a variety of opportunities. Visit our website for more information. I was looking for a first job. Um, I had been babysitting and decided it was something for a little more permanent. It pays very well. It's convenient. You can make your own schedule with the flexibility. That's something that I like. The people that I work with are great. I wouldn't ask for a better crew or management team to work for. This is Andy Tomlinson. When ensuring what's important to you, our agents are there when you need us the most. Tomlinson Insurance, for the best coverage at the best cost. Visit us online at tomlinsonins.com to learn more. You haven't had vodka soda like this. 
no one has. Made with the world's smoothest vodka plus real juice. New White Claw Vodka Soda. It's the Litter Media Game of the Week pregame show as we continue here on Litter Media Live. I'm Dan Ramey, and we have with us now Terry Holbert, head coach of the Logan Elm Braves. Logan Elm taking on their arch rival, the Circleville Tigers, in the opener for the Mid-State League this weekend. But before we get to this, uh, Terry, we want to take a moment to remember Brad Morris. This is a Logan Elm alum, and he loved Logan Elm Braves, Pickaway County, anything athletics, and we lost him over the weekend. He sure did. Uh, Brad, you know, simply put, Brad was a good man. Uh, he was great at his job. He was professional. Um, you know, I, I, I've developed over the last 10 years a great relationship with, with Brad. And so he was a friend even outside of, of the season. Um, but Brad was kind, uh, even through difficult seasons. He was always kind. Um, and, and he was an advocate for our young people in Pickaway County. You know, he, he was such a such a strong supporter of uh, of the young people, which is which is what we're all in this for myself and Coach Evans. And, you know, we're going to do some special things and, and certainly honor him in the right way. Um, and, you know, he, he's going to have the best seat, seat in the house on, on Friday night. Um, but it it doesn't make it any easier. That's for sure, because uh, Pickaway County has lost such an upstanding member of, of our, our community. And, and Brad loved Logan L. You know, Brad was a, was a brave. Uh, I spoke with him Friday night for the final time and, and he gave me his signature. How about them bravos? And that's how he, he would always start our phone conversations uh, when, when we would win. And uh, that, that echoes with me. It really does. Yeah. Uh, that needs to be immortalized somewhere, uh, perhaps on a, a grave marker or maybe a special marker at the school one of these days. I, I certainly will have one, if not two handkerchiefs with me, because I know it's going to be an emotional time after sure. we lost such a good guy. No doubt. Uh, but you do have a game to play as well. And the Circleville Tigers, they are looking for a touch of success that you've tapped into this year. Um, what are you expecting to see from the Circleville Tiger team? Um, you know, when, when you have a rivalry game such as this, um, you can throw the records out the window. You know, they, they, they've got some youth on their team, but they've also got some great skill. And, and they've progressively gotten better in these first three games. You, you saw their offensive performance against Westfall last, last week, putting up 36 points. Um, so it's a rivalry game. Our guys are going to have to be set to go and ready to go. And, I mean, we're going to prepare like it's a dogfight. I mean, we're, we're preparing for a great matchup. Uh, it seems to always always be a be a close game, and and I know Coach Evans will have his guys ready to play, as as will the Braves. You know, our, our kids are focused and and ready to get after it as well. So, should be an exciting night for football. That's for sure. When we saw you a couple of weekends ago at Westfall, uh, turnovers hurt Westfall. You had some turnovers, but but not as detrimental as what had happened for the Mustangs. And I don't care who you're playing. You, you just can't put the ball on the grass and expect to win. A hundred percent. I mean, it, it, it's one of the three major keys to victory, you know, winning, winning the turnover margin. And, and even in week one against Zane Trace, and as you mentioned, week two against Westfall, that's really been a heavy emphasis of ours. You know, we've gotten better each week in that category, but uh, we're still not perfect. And, and I would, I would really like to see us get to the perfect mark in regards to taking care of the football and, and having great ball security, because as you get into battles, like we're going to face this week, you know, that's one or two plays that make the difference in a game. And, and it, it has to be of the utmost importance to take care of the football. You, you've shown that you can throw the football if you have to, but I, I think your bread and butter is what's done on the ground. You've got some workhorses in the backfield that really make it happen. Yeah, we, we've got really two really good running backs, uh, Landon Thompson and, and Michael Bach, and, and they even each other out very well. They kind of balance each other out. You know, Landon is probably more of, of a downhill, powerful runner. Um, it's going to take, you know, multiple guys to get him to the ground. Uh, Michael is an incredible athlete. He's shifty. He's quick. Uh, all Michael needs is a, is a little seam, and, and he he can go. Um, so, you know that that presents a lot of issues, and there are times where we put them on the field at the same time, and and it presents issues for defense. And you know the the run game and establishing the run, it, it's always first priority in our offense. Uh, but you, it, you you have mentioned as well, 
We've been very efficient in the pass game, um, and a big part of that has been our run game that's really opened up uh, the, sec- the second half of that. And, and Walter's experience at quarterback, uh, that, that's huge for you because you've got a, a general out there on the field that can help uh, direct what you prescribe for them. It is, you know, in, in two of the three weeks he's thrown for over 200 yards. He was almost at 300 last week and probably would have been uh, had we not really kind of done what we did in the fourth quarter to kind of milk the clock a little bit and, and run the game out. But he threw for 275 last week. And, and beyond that, you know, he has the ability to, to change plays at the line of scrimmage. You know, he, he's, we've, we've put more and more on his plate and he's responded in, in a high manner and, you know, to have a junior that's out there when you call a play, it's not a great play call. He can make that change. He can get you in a better play. Um, I mean, that that's that's beyond his years. That's huge for our program. You've had three successful weeks, and, and now you've got, a, uh, as you mentioned, a much improved offense that you'll be facing this week. What does your defense need to do to keep um, 36 points off the board from Circleville? Well, the, the first thing we have to do is stop the run. Um, you, they, they've got an excellent running back in number seven, and um, we've got to make sure that he is contained. We've got to make sure that we've got eyes on him wherever he's at. Uh, and, and so that will be the first priority for our defense this week and really kind of the predominant focus of, of our, our plan of attack and game plan on that side of the ball. Of course, special teams, all part of it as well. And if you have things go your way, uh, you'll win that field position battle, and and sometimes that's through punting the ball. But if you never have to punt, that's the best way to control it, right? Absolutely, yeah. We, you know, we haven't punted much. Uh, we've had success when we have, but fortunately, we haven't had to punt a lot this this season. Good luck to you, and uh, we appreciate you making time available for us here on the Litter Media Game of the Week pregame show. Thank you. Whenever I first applied for the Archways opportunity, oh, do I have to pay this back? Do I have to do that? Like, is it a loan? And it's not, it's a scholarship. A goal of mine is to graduate college debt free. If you're a crew member, you get 2,500 a year. And if you're a manager, you get 3,000. And especially if you're going locally to college, like to the branch or something like that, it's really helpful. At Rathcamp Financial, we offer customized investment solutions and superior client service. We believe in long-term relationships and working to earn your continued trust. Our greatest satisfaction comes from working with clients for many years and helping them realize their dreams. Now that's one fast mower. Take command of your lawn with Dixie Chopper, the world's fastest lawnmower. It's our turn. It's our turn. It's the Litter Media Game of the Week post or pregame show for you. And um, we hope to have post game information for you after tomorrow night as well. Uh, Circleville is at Logan Elm in our featured game this week. But we want to talk about some of the other games that are going on. One which is on the schedule but is not going to happen is Minford and Oak Hill. That uh, They've had some injuries at Oak Hill with a small roster, and they've had to uh, cancel the game this week. Yeah, no postponement, a cancellation. They yeah. tried to work out a new date. None of that worked out for Oak Hill. Uh, some of our media colleagues in southern Ohio that are a little closer to that situation say that there's some discussion that Oak Hill may not even be able to finish uh, the football season. It's not the first time that that's happened uh, in this area, not necessarily Oak Hill, but uh, I know Millersport had to close down their uh, schedule a few years back and some other schools had similar problems. So it's unfortunate, especially for the kids that are participating. But like we talked on our daily show yesterday, uh, there's so much of a safety factor there uh, with football being a physical game you lose people, unfortunately, mm-hmm. because of injuries. And if you don't have many to start with, it, it's just hard to, to keep going. I recall during my Chillicothe days, uh, they were hosting Lyndon McKinley. This would have been back in the 1980s. 
And at the time, McKinley didn't have a large roster, and it was mostly made up of a handful of upperclassmen, but everyone else were freshmen and sophomores. And this was one of those really good John Sines teams. And so it was uh, really uh, a physical game that Chillicothe presented to them. They were dropping like flies. Oh, yeah. And I think the ones that did go out didn't want to come back in. The game. Mm-hmm. So at halftime, they had a discussion about cutting it back to seven-minute quarters for the next two uh, uh, quarters to finish out the game. So uh, it, it's just difficult because physical – Activity takes place in this game like no other sure. game. And so uh, the attrition rate is, is – it can be a casualty for you if you only have 22 players on your roster mm-hmm. and suddenly you lose three kids to injury. So, yeah. Which is much like what Eastern had last week. Right. And, and they managed to forge ahead, and, and but it depends upon the kinds of kids you have sure. as well. So. All right, uh, some of the games that are going on this week, many of the conference games open up, and that includes, uh, let's look at the rest of the Mid-State League. Right, of course, our game, Circleville at Logan Elm, great rivalry game, even though it's 0-3 versus 3-0. and uh, Throw all that out, folks. Yeah. They will be going at it. Uh, another big one in the Mid-State League, Buckeye, tomorrow night, uh, a battle of Fairfield County. Bloom Carroll at Amanda Clear Creek, a much-improved uh, Aces team this year. Both of those clubs are 2-1 and one going into that ball game. But remember, Bloom Carroll was a state runner-up <laughs> last year. And have been to the Final Four, what, three straight years? Yeah, so, so. so they, they, they know what it takes. And, and, well, going back a ways, Amanda Clear Creek does too, but it's just yeah. a, a new generation of coaches and players there. Uh, Liberty Union will be at Taze Valley and Fairfield Union on the road to Hamilton Township. Uh, SVC, of course, we've got Adina opening up at Zane Trace, which is the defending SVC champion. Uh, Piketon will be at Huntington. You've got uh, two other games there in the conference. Probably the game of the night uh, is Westfall at Unioto. Uh, both of those clubs are 2-1 are and one going into that ball game. A lot of people don't think of that as a rivalry game, but I know in the decade of the uh, – Late 80s, early 90s, it was. Those are bordering school districts. Right. You don't think of that, but they are. Uh, Unioto's northern boundary across the Pickaway County line is, is Westfall. So that could be a good one. Uh, Piketon will be at uh, Huntington. Piketon, a much improved team this year. They did get to the playoffs last year. Uh, but they have come out of the gate strong. Huntington still looking for a win, and that's at Huntington. So the Huntsman always will play you, play you tough. There are some uh, other league games that are being played. The Ohio Capital Conference featuring Lancaster. Uh, this is their first uh, full year, I believe, of being in the OCC, or maybe the second year. But uh, they are hosting New Albany. Mm-hmm. Uh, the SOC has just one game that we know of, and that's Lucasville Valley at Waverly. And then you've got uh, Vincent County playing at Megs in the TVC, but everything else is non-league from what we have. Well, all TVC also has Alexander at Athens and River Valley at Nelsonville, York. Uh, some non-conference games tomorrow night. Harvest Prep at Chillicothe. Buckeye Valley at Washington Courthouse. Miami Trace is at Bethel Tate. Hillsboro travels to Williamsburg. East Clinton is at McLean. Jackson will be at Western Brown. The Eastern Eagles, who we saw last week, they host Fayetteville. That's that's a long drive for Fayetteville. Yeah. Logan will be at Warren, back up into Fairfield County. Uh, Fairfield Christian is at Grove City Christian. Miller at Millersport. Burn Union is hosting Rosecrans. And Lancaster Fisher Catholic will be at Martin's Ferry, which is another, another long, long trip. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott Tomlinson at uh, Eastern was telling me last week, they were hosting Fayetteville, and he says, I don't know a whole lot about him. I'm going to be honest with you. He says, we haven't seen him for about seven years. So he wasn't sure exactly what to expect. Uh, by the way, that Eastern Southeastern highlight video is now on our YouTube channel. <clears throat> it was Military Appreciation Night last week out at the ball game, And um, I got a little emotional putting that together. Yeah, I imagine. So, well, I, get, I did get a chance to watch it last night. And I'm an emotional guy. A lot of red, white, and blue. Yes, a lot of that. And then a, a lot of black and blue afterwards because <laughs> it was a physical contest between the two. So you can check that out along with the Litter Media Extras. So we have performances by the, the bands, uh, also the cheerleaders. And, uh, of course, we take you into the post-game talk that Eastern had uh, with their players 
including Coach Burrow and his backflip. That was neat. <laughs> that was neat. Yeah. They, they, they had the Lord's Prayer at the end of it, and as soon as they said amen, somebody says, can I get a, can I get a backflip? <laughs> and the sea parted, and here came the backflip. Just like a revival service. <laughs> it, it was pretty cool. It was. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Blues Brothers, I, uh-huh. I thought I was just <laughs> for a moment there. Uh, coming up, it is our Neil Coleman Insurance Wyandotte Mutual Player of the Week. We will tell you who that is when we return with the Litter Media Game of the Week pregame show here on Litter Media Live. And here he is. Hey. It is Cam McDaniel. He, of course... Uh, is a graduate of Taze Valley High School now, but he was the OHSAA state champion. He has been a two-time world champion, a Pan Am champion, and also uh, took the the bronze, I think it was, uh, at another mm-hmm. event held somewhere in the world. He's Poland, been to, I think. Yeah, he's been to Poland. He has been to Chile. Uh, Peru, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, is another location. So, uh, And now his next stop is not the University of Nebraska just yet. He's going to Colorado Springs, Colorado, at the U.S. Olympic Training Center. He will be there for the next year Mm -hmm. training with the Olympian athletes. That's great. And uh, who knows? He may not even see the mat at Nebraska and just go on and take the world by storm in the Olympic Games. Wouldn't that be something? Congratulations, Cam McDaniel. If you have a nomination that you would like to make, simply go to our website, littermedia.com. Click where it says Players of the Week, and you can tell us who you would like to nominate. If you've got some statistical information to share, if you've got a photo to share, please include that as well. And uh, we'll make our selection and announce it on next week's Litter Media Game of the Week pregame show. We should also remind you that this is leading up to the Neil Coleman Insurance, Wyandotte Mutual Insurance, Litter Media Player of the Year Award, which will be announced in December. Okie doke. All right. Coming up, some final words on the Litter Media Game of the Week pregame show. Oh, <laughs> and here is Cam in action. I, I, I forgot we had this. Uh, this video is courtesy John Halley from SportingPumpkin.com. Uh, John said, I've got video of this uh, for you. It's from the top of my camera. So he had a video camera mm-hmm. on top of his actual camera. Mm-hmm. But this is the final round in the state championship match. And uh, this is about where everyone's going to go nuts here in just a moment. As there he is, he got what he wanted, hops into his dad's arms there, uh, Coach McDaniel, and, of course, the, the rest of the coaching staff there, uh, including one of the newest members of the Hall of Fame, uh, Coach Todd Nace. So congratulations there. And Cam McDaniel, our Neil Coleman Insurance Wyandotte Mutual Player of the Week from Taze Valley. And we're back. And we're back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know we have some commercials to play, so we, we, we got to take care of our sponsors That's because right. they take care of us. Final words after this. This is Andy Tomlinson. When insuring what's important to you, our agents are there when you need us the most. Tomlinson Insurance, for the best coverage at the best cost. Visit us online at tomlinsonins.com to learn more. Find a career you love with Pickaway Ross Adult Education. Skilled trades careers are in high demand with no signs of slowing down. Pickaway Ross offers career training programs with expert instructors and hands-on learning tactics to create a variety of opportunities. Visit our website for more information. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Nickelodeon Ultra. <laughs> you you okay yeah. over there? Yeah. You want to share that a friend, uh, information? No, better not. <laughs> friend sent me. It wasn't dirty. <laughs> friend sent me a little joke before that last commercial ended. 
if, if you want to know, send Mike a, a personal message <laughs> here on Facebook. I'll, I'll text it to you. All right. Uh, tomorrow, Litter Media Game of the Week, and we will have our coverage. Uh, we're crossing our fingers on this. It's been a little hit and miss with Litter Media Radio, uh, making sure we have the proper connections and everything. But uh, here is the QR code for you to scan if you want to be able to have that go right to your smartphone and uh, littermedia.com. Now, if we have an issue with our broadcast tomorrow evening, we will switch gears and go over to Facebook Live, much like this program right here. And uh, someone thinking, why don't you do both at the same time? Well, we we haven't tried it to see if it actually works that way. So uh, our fingers are crossed. Uh, I had this game last year. Uh, mm-hmm. When we were doing our post game show, uh, I can't remember where you were that night. I was at Circleville for this ball game. I think it was twenty one to nothing ended up, but it was a lot closer than that. Yeah, uh, it kind of you know pulled away there at the end. But a very physical ball game, as Dan alluded to a little bit earlier, and I'm sure it won't be any less mm-hmm. tomorrow night. And we'll be remembering Brad Morris as well. So. Brad, thank you for everything you did mm-hmm. while you were here on this uh, sod, I, and I'm sure you're kicking up gold dust right mm-hmm. now. And uh, maybe if they've got a website up there, <laughs> he's reporting on, on something oh, going on yeah. in heaven. So for Brad Morris, his family and friends, we will see you soon right here with another edition of Litter Media Live.